to the computer. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Karen Batty. I am probably either your director or your upline director with Pampered Chef. Welcome. It is April something, 26, I think. Um, and I'm here to talk. Oh, thank you, honey. Here's the notes that I left in my printer. Um, here to talk to you a little bit about um, virtual parties and the, uh, and some of the things that we're hearing from people now that, you know, we're in this COVID-19, we're kind of down, uh, you know, um, on lockdown. And um, so there is a saying that it's most often attributed to Woody Allen. It says 90% of life is showing up. All right. In mid-March, I was really scared. Hold on one second. Honey, can you, Eric, Eric, he, his, um, his headphones are on. And he thinks that, that I can't hear the TV, but I can. Hold on. Eric. Sorry. The volume's on on the television. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So 90% of life is showing up. Um, in mid-March, I was very worried, not just because of the virus and the fact that I'm um, immunocompromised, but also because I was worried about what the virus would mean for our business. Um, and I have that feeling before. I remember right after 9-11 going, uh-oh. And I remember in 2008 when the whole economy imploded. Um, so I gave myself a pep talk and I reminded myself that in times like these, people who show up do well. So I made as quick a pivot as I could. Um, and not only did it work well, but I'm having fun with virtual parties. I've always known how to do them. I've done them, but I've never had fun with them before, which is why I didn't do them 100%. Um, I, did, I did them like 5%. I did them when people like said, fine, I don't want, you know, <laughs> they wouldn't do an in-home party. I'd be like, okay, twist my arm, I'll do a virtual one. But now I realize because there are many ways to do virtual parties and I have found one that has now just brought me joy that, oh, I can really like this. And I am on track. Now I've been in business for 24 years. I'm on track to have one of my biggest months ever in personal sales. Normally I sell five to 6,000 a month. Thank you, Allison. Um, in March, after all my in-home parties canceled and I thought I'm gonna be lucky to hit 750 in personal sales as a director, my sales ended up being 7,000 for the month. Right now my sales are at 11,600. And I did a party just now and I've got another one going on tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm shocked. And, and here's the other thing, our team sales, um, I, I, some of you might have seen me go live on OWL or in Batty Long, Downline Director Group, and I said that our sales had already exceeded what we did in September, and in another day or two, we could pass what we did in October. Did you guys hear that? I was wrong, because as of about an hour ago, we surpassed what we did in October. In a few hours. We are on track to have our biggest month ever. Why? I don't know, April's the new November. Well, I do know why. People are stuck at home. We have captive audiences. Nobody's got plans. No one's like, I'm going to the movies that night. Nobody's saying I got a wedding to go to. Nobody's saying I got to take the kids to their after school activities or any of that. It's all off the table. Um, and people are cooking at home like every night. And think about those people who are telecommuting and managing their kids' homeschooling. I never did that. I had three kids. I never did that. I can't imagine trying to get three meals on the table while telecommuting and managing school, homeschool for my kids and not having decent cooking tools. How the heck would I ever manage getting dinner on the table? Um, so people really do more than ever now need and want our products. And they also want the social interaction, right? How many of you are just like, oh, I want to see people. I sure am, yeah. And so our virtual parties can really fill that need. And then one more thing before I get started. For those of you who are diehard in-home party consultants who are saying, I'm just gonna wait till all this blows over. I just want you to think about this. It's gonna be at least the end of May, probably mid-June or more before we can, we can go out into the real world again. 
And by the time you go to reach out to your customers, they might start thinking, where were you when I needed you? Where were you when I was stuck at home making three meals a day? Um, I got invited to other virtual parties. I figured you were done. I didn't hear from you. So they went to other virtual parties and then maybe they booked with other consultants. You don't want that to happen. Guys, I've been through many sort of unprecedented things, right? 2008 was unprecedented. 9-11 was unprecedented. This is unprecedented. This is really the time when we um, build loyal customer bases. When you are serving customers this this time of year and you know during what's going on this is when you can really build those bonds and make real lasting connections okay so this is a i believe four steps to um really jumping in on this okay four easy steps number one anticipate and be ready to address hesitations to ho hosting no matter when we go out to book parties, when we reach out, we're gonna hear some hesitations. It's a numbers game. One out of every six to eight will say yes. And guys, I kept track. The numbers are no different now. The hesitations are different, but the numbers pretty much the same for me when I went to fill my calendar with virtual parties. Now, we used to hear, I don't have time to have a party. I'm not hearing that anymore. What I am hearing is, oh, I don't know, some people are broke, you know, people are worried about the virus, right? So you know you're gonna hear that. So one of the first things that I encourage you to do is brag the objection. When you're going to reach out to somebody, you can do it any way you want. You can reach out by uh, phone, you can reach out by text, you can reach out by Facebook Messenger, any way you want. But I, su I suggest that you reach out in a way that brags some common it objections. So, um, and again, I'm gonna share this, this wording with you so don't feel like you have to write, write it all down or write any of it down for that matter. I basically reached out and said something like this. Hi, as you know, I normally conduct in-home parties because I was reaching out to people I knew. But as you know, the world changed. So I started thinking about ways that I could help in these crazy times. Schools are closed, restaurants are closed, but dinner still needs to get on the table. And also many are looking for a fun distraction. We have to socially distance uh, from each other, but we want the connection. So enter in the Pamper Chef virtual party. Parties were all virtual through Facebook events or groups. I'll go live from my kitchen, just like I would at an in-home party to show off the products people need and want to see. I'll give people a chance to vote on what products they want to see, but no purchase is necessary. So for those of your friends who are out of work, they can still join the fun and learn some um, time-saving tips and great budget-friendly recipes. Others who are working from home with their usual income will probably find some products that will make it easier for them to get meals on the table. Would you like to consider hosting one of these events? You'll earn free and discounted products, what do you think? This is a longer message than I would normally send out to get bookings. However, people have more time to read these things. And I found that when I addressed and I just called out the elephant in the room, you know, yes, some of your friends are laid off, but they, but we, you know, they can still have fun. They can still get ideas. Um, people are home. They need these recipes. They need these ideas. Okay. So, but by just sort of addressing some of the common hesitations, that's going to, that's going to hand them the solutions before they even come up with the hesitations. So that's what we call bragging the hesitations. You can also change the wording slightly to promote fundraisers. I will also post that as well. So that's great because Pampered Chef, you guys remember, probably know, they are doubling the donations for Feeding America fundraisers through the end of May. And also um, our Help With Cancer fundraisers that go to support um, Hope Lodge, they're still gonna support Hope Lodge, but in a different way. They can't bring together immunocompromised people who are going through cancer treatments into these Hope Lodges. So they are using them um, as places for um, those frontline medical workers to live near the hospitals that they serve so that they don't expose their family um, or their loved ones that they, that they live with um, to the COVID-19. Uh, so Hope Lodges are gonna be serving these, these doctors and nurses and others who work in the hospital setting. Okay, so um, you can, you can if, if it feels better for you to say, I want to be part of the solution, go start promoting those. And guys, I've done two help, um, fundraisers for Feeding America. Um, the two of them together combined um, almost 5,000 in sales. And think about it. 
every dollar raised is now 20 meals for local families in need, you know? So think about that, it's huge, it's huge. Um, actually, no, it's 30% of the sales. Every dollar is still 10 meals for families. Okay, um, okay. Some people are gonna be hesitant. So actually you guys can unmute. Tell me what hesitations you either are hearing or fear that you're going to hear as you reach out to book these parties. Anybody? So I think, you know, the obvious one is I don't have, my friends don't have any money, they're not working. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, um, I'm thinking that what you're gonna hear is that it's just too crazy at my house. The kids are running around and you know the husband is here and I can't, I don't have any peace and quiet. I can't possibly do this. Okay. Only because I hear that from my own daughter. I barely <laughs> can talk to her, so. I knew exactly where that was coming from. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about those two hesitations because those are definitely something that you're gonna hear. Um, so. You guys, if, if you've been around me for more than 10 minutes, you know all about the feel, felt, found. Okay, this is um, sort of a thing I think about when I'm thinking about hesitations. You wanna um, sort of relate to, to people how they're feeling and say, yeah, I, I understand how you feel. Um, if you felt that way, you can say, you know, I kind of felt that way myself a little while ago, but here's what I found now that I'm booking these things. Okay, so you can address their concerns. If you don't want to say feel, felt, found, you can change it up a little bit. Like, I understand your concern. I totally get where you're coming from. Um, and sometimes if I feel like I'm going to come across as pushy, I'll say, I totally understand your concern, but can I give you some food for thought? So I'm asking permission. And guys, whenever I've said to someone, can I give you some food for thought? None of them have said, no, you can't. So once they say, sure, Karen, you can give me some food for thought, now I can give them some information and I don't feel like I'm putting it on them. I feel like I got permission to share it with them. So I get that there's a lot of people laid off. Unemployment is now over 10%. So I totally understand where, where your, what your concern is. But here's the thing, because I was concerned about that last month as I started reaching out to people to schedule these. But here's what I'm finding. Um, People who are unemployed still need to connect with their friends and have fun. They still need, and are probably more so than ever before, need some really budget-friendly recipes, and they don't have to purchase anything. But you know what they'll hear about at your party? They're going to hear about two things that, that could be helpful to them. They're going to hear about how they can get free and disc discounted products when they host a party of their own. And I have plenty of hosts who do not uh, redeem their half price items, they just redeem their free stuff. And free fits every budget, doesn't it? And I say that, I engage them in conversation. They go, yeah, like, right, it does. And the second thing they're gonna hear about is how they, um, about this business opportunity. And one of the positions available is a short term consultant. People could sign up for just 30 days, 45 days, 60 days until the world gets back to normal. And then, but unemployment is 10%. That means 90% of your friends are still employed. And then again, I'll engage them in conversation. When's the last time you put gas in your tank? And people laugh. They're like, I can't even remember. And I'll say, when's the last time you spent money going out to eat? You know, and I'll say, so what I'm hearing from people is they have even the ones who are telecommuting, they've got their same pay coming in, but they're not putting gas in their car. They're not getting coffee on their way to work. They're not getting lunch at the office and they're not going out to eat twice a week. And if they had daycare, they don't even have daycare costs anymore. So our sales in the Pampered Chef world in the month of April so far are rivaling and maybe even topping what they were in November before the holidays. So I'll say, you don't want to miss out on this day. If you wait, because sometimes people say, I think I want to wait for all this to blow over. I said, if you wait till for it to blow over, people are going to have plans. Once they can get out, they're going to have plans. And you know what? They're probably going to swear off cooking for a couple of months. <laughs> so you want to get in on your party now. And so I'll say to them, so here's the thing. How about if we try this? I'll set up the group and you invite your friends. 
and we see who wants to come. If nobody comes, you don't have to have the party. But if you find your friends are interested and they start accepting the invite, we'll go for it. What do you think? Okay, so guys, did it roll off my tongue this smoothly in the beginning? No, but you know what I did? I came up with the hesitations and I practiced in the bathroom mirror with a smile like I meant it. Okay, and then I just talked to people. Did it come out smoothly and perfectly every time? Heck no. But I had my bullets of people need the social interaction. People need to get three meals on the table. People aren't spending money on this, this, and this. And I just kind of had bullets on a piece of paper. Okay, so when I was talking to that host, I could really connect with them. A lot of times, um, if I'm texting, I'll just say, do you have a minute to talk? Um, or I'll send a little voice clip through text or Facebook Messenger, because I feel like then they can hear our enthusiasm, our voice. And we can say in 30 seconds what would be really too long to read. So another thing you can do is take this wording and instead of typing it all up and texting it to people, you can make a little voice clip and send it to a bunch of people. I didn't come up with that idea till two weeks in. So either way works, but I think the voice clip is a little bit easier for people to listen to. What is the voice clip? Um, you just take your, take your phone. If you text somebody, you'll see a little microphone. And oh, you yeah. Can, yeah. And you can do it on, through Facebook Messenger as well. Never done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe I, I taught somebody something. Yeah. Oh, there she goes. She's doing an old-fashioned screenshot. <laughs> oh, okay. Holding it up to the camera. Okay. All right. Um, now, again, keep track. One out of every six to eight will likely say yes. I was shocked, guys, absolutely shocked. I always, I, I, I have the same kind of gremlins that some of you guys have sometimes. Um, and, you know, and I thought for sure I was going to get way more no's this time of year, but I got the same number of no thank yous as usual. Like I said, the hesitations are different. The numbers, they pan out the same. Okay, so that's number one. You're gonna do a bunch of outreach and you're gonna brag the objection. Number two, do your parties, do your virtual parties and groups, okay? Um, why? Well, for three main reasons. You can pre-post in there, you know, time your posts. You can attach it to post by party if you wanna use an outline. The third that I think is most important is when you set up an event, once that time passes, it's really hard for people to get back into the event because it's no longer on their timeline. They have to go back into their calendar and find it and good luck with that. In a group, it stays fresh anytime you post there and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so use the groups. Why did I start using groups? Because that was what that everybody was having success with me. That's what they told me. Yes, Lynn. You're Plus muted issues when I was doing it in, event, in events that they were minimizing the amount of time that they, minimizing the amount of comments they would get. You could, they could still be logged on, but they were, weren't able to talk to me very often. They would just get shut off. Oh, interesting. Uh, in the events, not in groups. Okay. So right. yeah, one more reason. Right. Yeah. One right. more reason to go with the groups for sure. Right. So I haven't had any troubles with the group. Okay. And guys, if you've never set up a group, it's just like an event. Instead of saying click create group or create event, you're going to click group, create group. Um, if you still need help with it, I made a little video. It's uh, posted in Avengers. I can post it anywhere. Um, I can send it to you personally, whatever. It shows you how to set up the group. But like, I mean, how does that work? Because like people say, oh, it's rude to just add people to groups. You have to ask them invite first. You. You're inviting them. Oh, okay. It's invited and they have to accept it. Yeah, so that, oh. that gone are those days. That changed a while ago with Facebook. You, you can't just add people. Now you invite them. Okay. Then they have to accept it. Yep. Good I've question. never had a problem with the events. What's that? But I've never had problems with the events. Yeah, the only thing is, um, you know, if you're, po like when I was doing in-home parties, I would um, promote them through events because once the party happened, they weren't seeing me and whatever. But now, yeah, you, you want a group so that it stays open longer. And like I said, you might want to time your post or use post my party if you're doing a lot of these. Hey, Karen. Yes. When you do the invite, the last time I tried doing that, most of the invites didn't go out. So what is the step? You put under the invite, you find the person's name and then you put the message and because no, I, like just, 
you set up the group and then there's a thing that says invite and it's got a bunch of your, your friends and you just go click, 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 invite. Yeah that, yeah, that didn't happen the last time. Okay, I'll have to try it again. It's been a while. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. try it again. Try it again, yep. So who, who's inviting all the people? Is it you or is it the host? The host. Oh, okay, so like, does she have to be like the co-admin of the group or something? Anybody can invite. If you set it up that way, anybody can invite. I do make the host an admin so that they can message the people who've been invited. Um, and I'll get to that. But no, the host invites. And um, if someone who's been invited wants to invite friends, they can go ahead and do that. Um, you don't need to be an admin to invite. To invite. Okay. Um, and yes, I do make the host an admin. And the reason I do that is so that the host can um, wait 24 hours to see who accepts the invite and then go back and click on the invited. And this is all in the instructions that I'm going to be posting, the host coaching instructions. You're gonna encourage your host to first invite and then the next day you're gonna say, wow, look at how many people have, have accepted the invite already. Here's what to do next. And it gives them step-by-step -step instructions on how to go into the group, click on members, click on invited. They're gonna see all the people who've been invited but haven't said yes or no. And then you're gonna give them a message, which is right in my document, on what to send to all those other people. Okay, which brings me to number three. So number one, you're gonna reach out, brag the objection. Number two, you're gonna use groups. Number three, you're gonna host coach. Yes, Allison, you're muted. Can you please check the waiting room real quick, please? Um, oh, yes, sorry. Several people wanting in. Yes, admit all. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I had that, I had that problem too. So, you, you know, you have to like let people into the meeting. You do now. Yeah, because um, <laughs> since everybody's using Zoom, I guess there were people, some hackers getting into Zoom. Oh, right, right. You have to admit everybody. Thank you, Allison. If you could keep, continue to keep an eye on that for me, that'd be great. Welcome. For those of you who just um, showed up, we are recording this. So if you need to go back and listen to, from the beginning, you can go ahead and do that. Basically, number, step number one was reach out and brag the objection. Number two, set up groups. Number three, host coach. Always, always, always host coaching is the most important thing we do. Once the parties are lined up, um, you know, a lot of people worry about what recipe you're going to highlight or what things you're going to post or what games you're going to play or whatever. But the bottom line is it's how many people know there's a party going on and have access to, access to a shopping link that makes the most difference. So the host coaching document um, that I, that, um, I created um, came from a lot of successful people and things that they were doing. Um, I, I tailored it to groups because that's what we're, we're all using now. Um, and, um, but one thing about this is it is a copy and paste document, guys. You're gonna be able to just set up a party, copy, paste, copy, paste. So, um, and it's all about the numbers. So for those of you, how many of you do lots of virtual parties? Raise your hand if you do mostly virtual parties. Okay, so um, let's see, I think that's Tammy and Allison. So I want you guys to tell me, what are the numbers? How many people um, do you encourage your host to invite? How many people is the goal to have there? <clears throat> this is the way I host coach in my call. Um, number one, before the call, I go into their personal profile. I click friends so I know how many friends they have. Mm -hmm. If it's set to private and um, the number is not there, I message them. Hey, Sally, can you please let me know how many friends you have? Because that determines the platform I use for your party page. Because like events, she can't invite more than 485 groups unlimited. So I have that number. So when I do the host coaching call, I say, um, you want to invite everyone unless they are deceased, a minor, or a double profile. And I watch the numbers. Mm -hmm. And if I have 700 friends, I totally expect to be 550, 600. Because right. if they say I'm done inviting and I look and there's only 50, they're not done inviting. Right. One in 10 people will RSVP and that statistic is spot on. And you want to shoot to have 50 people in that party. Okay, so you guys heard her. She knows her numbers. She knows um, how many friends they have. She knows how many are gonna, you know, every time you invite somebody, how many are gonna be in there? And then how many, her goal is we want 50 people in that group, okay? She knows her numbers and she coaches toward it. So guys, that's the key here. And did I know she was gonna know these numbers? 
Heck no, I didn't ask her ahead of time. And, but I just know that everybody who does a lot of virtual parties and is successful at them, they all know their numbers. They know exactly what they're coaching toward. Okay, so this document that I'm gonna be sharing with you, um, it's what I'm using. So they have to you know, invite at least this, but by the way, I'm totally taking that. Um, you wanna invite everybody who's not deceased or a minor or has a double profile. <laughs> That is hysterical. Anyway, so um, then they invite. And then after 24 hours, we go back and, and we cheer them on. Look at how many people are coming. Okay, so here's an idea to do today. I want you to post the group to your wall. So I give them words to say, and I take the URL for the group and they post it. So now some more people float through who maybe didn't see the invite and they request to come in. And then the next day I have them go in and message the guests who haven't um, responded. And I give them the words to say, so it's copy paste. And guys, you know, I don't usually have 30 people at a cooking show, but these days at virtual parties, 20, 30, 40, 50, oh my gosh, you know, and I know Tammy and Allison are probably like, yeah, no kidding, Gigi, when, why didn't you get on the bandwagon earlier? Um, but it was because virtual parties didn't bring me joy. So now, um, like I said, I'm gonna, yes. Quick question. Yeah. On the on the groups, is, they, is there still a limit on how many they can invite at one time not to get into Facebook jail? No, I don't believe so. Okay, I always said there is. Told, Allison, I think, I, you a, have to be less than what twenty five or fifty at a time or something. Oh no no no, I don't think so. Allison, is there a limit? It's constantly changing, and um, I every Tuesday I t I tend to get the the Facebook updates of what's changing. But what's tried and true for me is so a couple of months ago, it was called the five and five rule. Invite no more than five people at a time with a five second pause in between. I have not had one single problem. Oh, if people add that invite to too fast. I'm gonna if add that. people add too fast mm -hmm. and too many, yes, it'll throw up a red flag. And I also suggest if people have access to a computer, do the inviting from a computer and not a mobile device. Oh. Then there are special rules if they do the device. Thank you. Allison, what are the special rules for a mobile? Because that's how my... Okay. The thing is the Facebook platform is totally different from desktop versus mobile. And if people, and I asked my host, okay, how are you going to invite on a mobile or a desktop or a computer? And if they tell me mobile, I say, please do all your inviting from one location. I give up my host two days to get the invites completed. I said, you don't have to do it in one setting, but just from one location, such as home. If you're inviting some from home, some from work, some from the grocery store, some from driving around, your cell phone is pinging off of different cell towers. And it's Facebook is seeing you inviting people from different IP addresses. And that raises a red flag that you're a scammer. Ah, okay. So that's why you've got to be careful. Uh, Facebook really watches mobile devices. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so host coach. And um, Allison, I don't know, do you have a document that you'd be willing to share that has a lot of these tips on there? <laughs> I can type one up. <laughs> it's, I, I've got I've got it in my host coaching video, but uh, um, I can probably. And the whole thing is, the it changes. Facebook is constantly changing. Yep. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But I put the five and five rule because that's something that, you know, we can all sort of embrace. Okay. So you're definitely going to host coach. Know your numbers. Um, and like I said, it's all in the document. Um, I give them ideas, one idea of the day that takes less than five minutes to build attendance. Um, and then the next is, and I think this is key, decide what kind of virtual party is right for you. I know some people who run them over seven days. I sooner stick a fork in my eye, but it works for some people. Um, other people do three to four day parties. Other people are doing like 45 minute parties where they just take the whole four to five day outline and post it over 40 minutes, one night, one and done. Um, for me, the thing that just made this all just, you know, like, oh, I can embrace this is I do a one night, 30 minute uh, Facebook live party. It's just like an in-home party for me, only on Facebook live. 
and it, it gives me that people fix. I can talk instead of type. I'm not, you know, and to me, it just brings me way more joy. And um, people can do this in just a couple of days because they just invite. I put a, um, some things on there that people can respond to that, um, that helps me determine what I'm going to show. I create a poll where they can vote on their favorite power tool that they want to see. Um, I have them post their pet peeve in a kitchen. Like, what's your pet peeve? If I have a solution for it, I'm going to show it to you Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, I post the, the link for the online catalog. They say, check this out. Tell me what catches your eye. And I'll add it to my list of things to show you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Okay, so, and, and then just, I keep it real simple and I throw a couple recipes in there and then I just go live. And after I, ma I make the recipe or sometimes I don't make a recipe, I'll just prep vegetables for the, for the week. You know, anything that I can show off products for, but most of the time I'm making my dinner. Yes, Allison. I have a question for you. Um, and I'm going to try this this week in my parties. Um, I'm going to, I like the poll, but I'm going to do the, um, a Zoom, a half hour Zoom uh, yep. show. Post the link in my Facebook group and um, in the party. Mm -hmm. uh, why do Facebook Live versus Zoom where people can ask that's, you questions? And that's a great question. And you know what? There is no right or wrong. Try them both. Uh, Michelle Weinstein is doing Zoom. She'll do three or four hosts in a week, and they're all in separate groups, but one Zoom link. So she gets all the people from all the different parties coming to one Zoom presentation. So you can do that. I like to personalize it. The other thing I do to personalize it is um, a little, shortly before I go live, I bring up the show and I scroll through and I see who's pet peeve or, you know, I also say post your favorite product from Pampered Chef and I put little notes on a sticky note and I have it right by my camera. So I'll look up and, and as I'm looking in the camera, I can see all the names. And so if someone said they had a pet peeve, I go, I'll, I'll be like, Mary, you told me your pet peeve of blah, blah, blah. Girlfriend, you're going to want to take, take, you know, close attention to this. Or, um, or, or Sue, I know you said this was your favorite, right? Yeah, I love it too. And I'm, tonight I'm going to use it for. So I, I will call people by name and I feel like that gives a much better connection. So, um, but Michelle is like, she's into simplifying. So she um, does them all in one. Now, what I have found with Zoom in the past, and I haven't done it recently, but you know, here in New Hampshire, we, I don't know, every once in a while we get a little bit of snow and, um, and, and our shows can't hold. So back years ago, last couple of years, when a show got snowed out, we do it via Zoom. But what I had found, what I found back then was there were people who were just sort of like, there, it's one more step and some people are scared of technology. And they're like, oh, I have to, I have, to, I have to download an app? Ooh, I don't know about this. That being said, now everybody is using Zoom or at least they've heard of it. And they go, oh, that's that Zoom thing. I should probably try that. The other thing is most people aren't home alone unless they live alone. <laughs> so they have someone who can help them with Zoom, right? Um, so, um, so I might try it again, but the other thing about Zoom is then you have to record it, you have to upload it to YouTube, and then post it in the event in order for people to go back and see it afterwards. Uh, but I do love the interaction like we got here where people can, can you know, um, jump in and ask questions. Yes, Josh. Uh, that, that's exactly what I was going to say, Karen, is that um, I know one of the reasons that you loved the in-home parties is the interaction. And it sounds like you're creating that with the Facebook live video, but it's still then pretty much one way from you to them. And, and I think a zoom call like this would give more, and I'm trying to advertise to people that I'll still give you a way to have social engagement. Um, although I'm saying that having never tried it yet, which is That's right. Okay. Go for but it. I, yeah. We'll do the show and then I'll sign off and go offline and wait to answer your questions from the orders. And you can like, you know, you know, bring your wine glass to the next box and have a, have a little Zoom party. Um, so the interaction is, is what I was thinking. Yeah, and actually I was talking to um, our, uh, our friend Lene this afternoon right. and just kind of brainstorming with her. And because the other thing about Zoom is if people don't mute, you got dogs barking in the background. And if you, and I tell everybody to do speaker view so they can see what I'm doing. They do speaker view and someone's dog is barking. They're looking at the dog yeah. instead of me. So, um, 
and then if you have everybody mute, well, it's not as interactive until the end when you can have everybody unmute. So what I was actually thinking about doing is uh, posting, you know, I'm going to go live at this such and such a time and a Zoom link right under it. So I'll go live and then maybe right after hop on the Zoom link and I'll just sit down with a glass of wine with everybody else and, and just um, answer questions, things that's like a, that. That's a great idea to have it be a hybrid. I like that a lot. Yeah, because um, it, can, it can get noisy and, and distracting in the Zoom thing itself. I was, I was thinking your, your point about the dog and, and then you lose eight minutes because everybody's ooing and eyeing about the dog and then bringing theirs in to the... Yeah, yeah then everyone's holding their dogs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or their, their cat. <laughs> or their cat, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, pick something that works for you and just run with it promote the heck out of it, um, be the most excited person. Uh, um, I don't know if I shared the quote because now I forgot. Um, stop buying their story and start selling them yours. Okay, don't go in it going, gosh, I, you know, I hope people, I don't know if anybody's gonna want this. And then they go, oh, but people are broke. And you go, yeah, people are broke. No, I, it, you know, I get it that some people are broke right now, but they're gonna hear about how they can get free products by hosting and they're gonna hear about a business opportunity that could be a lifesaver for them. And guess what, 90% of people are still employed and those people are not putting gas in their car, they're not going out to eat, they're not going anywhere. They, they, it's, they're, they're not going to soccer practice, and they're not going anywhere. So guys, be excited. Like I said, we have already topped our, um, what we have sold in October, and we are on our way to topping what we sold in November, okay? Wow. We have literally a captive audience right now, okay? Um, okay, so here's what I found. Lining up the, the original parties, once I was going from in-home to, to virtual, lining up those initial parties was the hardest part. People wanted to host, but they had concerns. And I had to pretend I was confident <laughs> about this new format that I was running with. But once I said it and once I started doing it, here's what I found. Getting bookings from those, piece of cake. Because the people who come to these, they're like, oh good, I need to cook at home. And I need these products. Oh good, I want to see my friends. And they come on, they're interacting with it. These are the people who are going to book and they liked it. How many of you have shopped online in the last 48 hours? Yeah, what are you buying? Just holler it out. A printer. Everything. Everything. <laughs> A printer. Everything. I've, pros I've um, purchased groceries, rain barrels, seed, seed starters, wood, fencing, pavers, lattice. Uh, and that's just what I remember um, from the last couple of days. I mean, I'm just online. I'm just buying. Oh, wine. I went to a virtual wine tasting party. Um, I bought wine online too, so add that into the mix. So, um, candles. what's that? I bought candles. Candles, there you go. I haven't bought anything. Yes, I did. I bought candles. <laughs> yes. So, um, so yeah, like I said, they're, they're telecommuting, they're managing their kids' homeschooling, and they need to put three meals on the day, uh, a day on the table. All right. Um, like I said, if you wait till this blows over, people are going to be busy. They're going to be connecting with people they haven't seen in such a long time. Um, and your customers might be just not cooking for the next two months. They might be saying, I'm not even going to bother cooking for two months. Um, and, and here's the thing. We are having a record-breaking month. Um, and what I'm seeing is there's this gap that's usually like this, and it's like this. The people who are selling are selling, and the people who aren't, aren't. Um, and if you're part of the group that's been on the sidelines, guys, please get out in the game because um, people need and want our services now probably more than ever, ever before. Um, and I don't think it's gonna change, I don't think our situation at home is gonna change in the next couple of weeks. Um, end of May is now what our, our mayor here in New Hampshire says is the soonest. So um, do you want in on helping people during these unprecedented times? Do you wanna help your hosts and customers get the products they need? Do you wanna help uh, raise money for Feeding America and Hope Lodges? Um, or do you wanna sit on the sidelines and wait for it all, to all blow over? 
my hope is, you know, you'll get out there because it is, um, yeah, it, it's a great time to be in the game. And it, like I said, 90% is showing up. All right. So I will. Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing about Zoom. Um, it is a pay service. They have a free version, but it's limited to who you can, how many people you can invite. And I think you can only have it for like 30 minutes. It's not expensive to do it. It's like 15 bucks a month or something. But just so people are aware, there is a free version, but it doesn't have, it has some restrictions. Yeah, it's up to 25 people, and I believe it's 40 minutes. Okay. Um, is it up to $15 a month now for Zoom? Well, my friend, she, uh, she has a Zoom, and she got it because um, she runs a couple of meetup groups, so she's been using it for that. I think she said she got a special for, like, the first few months for, like, $10 a month. Yeah, I think that. But then she said it was, like, 15 Yeah, I think it's nine ninety nine, but maybe I pay more, and I didn't realize it went up. Uh, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. Um, yeah, other questions? Oh, Nancy, I want to say I, ne I, I never addressed your concern about I'm crazy busy. My husband's home. My kids are home. Uh, to that, I'd say you need a girl's night out and you're not going to get one for a while. How about if we do, you know, um, a girl's night out? Well, we can do it at, at 8 o'clock, 830 at night when the kids are in bed. Sorry, Josh, but every once in a while, people need a girl's night out. <laughs> I can sell that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There Let's you go. make cocktails yeah. at 9. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktails at nine. Love it. Happy hour with the pampered chef. Absolutely. What do they call those? Um, uh, quarantinis? Oh, we have, I like that. Yeah, quarantinis. It's an actual recipe because it has like um, vitamin C and all kinds of stuff to enhance the immune system while you're under quarantine. Yeah. Nice. Um, Karen, what kind, what kind oh, of recipes are you doing? What kind of recipes am I doing? Um, first, th I will tell you what recipes I'm doing, but then I will tell you it doesn't matter what you do. Um, I, tonight I, in my quick, they, they voted for the quick cooker. So I made uh, chicken teriyaki and rice that came right out of the cookbook there. I added broccoli to it. Last night, um, I made something in the air fryer for dinner. I forget what. <laughs> I, I have a party every night this week, guys. I'm just like, what? Um, and it's a half an hour. For me last week. Half an hour. Um, so if, if, if the party is early enough, I'll make dinner. Otherwise, I have vegetables and I'll just prep vegetables for the next day. So, you know, with one onion, you can take part of it and spiralize it. Then take our simple slicer and slice it. Then take the slices and throw them under the food chopper and chop them up. Take some other slices, throw them in the manual food processor and process them. Add some garlic to it and do whatever the heck you want. I mean, with one onion, I used to call it, we used to, back in the day, we used to call it the potato demo. For people who want a tight budget, buy chips and salsa and a couple of potatoes. And with one potato, you can show off probably, I don't know, $1,000 or more of product. Um, okay, so if you don't have to actually cook anything, you can just do yes. that type of thing too. Perfect. Right. I just, I, just um, I call it the sacrificial potato demo. <laughs> okay. I have um, two guests, two hosts that are actually going to do the live and it'll be my first time so I'm kind of a little nervous I was like what do I do and uh it, it is a little unnerving in the beginning if you want you don't want to go live but you like the idea of just kind of doing it all in 30 minutes um do a video and post it or make make short videos and post those yes Josh I have a question for you guys who have been doing you know virtual parties as a big part of your business for a while. And maybe this is a general host, co host coaching question anyway, but recently my last couple parties have been with other direct sales people. And when I've pushed them, or I haven't pushed, but when I've talked to them about your numbers are, let, let you know, you do this, right? So you know all of the tricks about inviting people. And they're like, yeah, technically I'm cheating on another consultant with you. So we're going to keep it <laughs> to a particular size group. And I'm like, mm, okay. Well, I mean, that I think that's sensitive to all of us. We have a good team. We like our team. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm cheating on people, but I also want to know what to tell those hosts. I can um, answer unless somebody else has an idea. I was just going to say, um, I personally make a terrible host for other companies. I am the worst. Um, so, <laughs> but I wouldn't do that to the consultant. Obviously, I would. I would invite all my friends. Um, that hasn't happened to me yet, uh, but sometimes they are a little weird. 
I hmm. find when it comes to inviting, but I still do the same things that I do with anybody else and just say, if you want your party to be successful, we need to get a larger number of people in your group. Right. And then toward the end, if they just don't do it, I, I will go with what the party is and they'll see at the end yeah. what I mean by that. Um, so even though they should already know that, right? I think, and it's like, especially as we've, I've taken a couple of live parties and pivoted them into virtual parties and, you know, a live party with 15 people and you're feeling great about it. And they're like, yeah, 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 it'll be fine. And then it's a virtual party with 15 and there's only two and a half people who are participating. And it's like, guys. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and if you've got 15 and you and the host are two of them. Um, so here's the thing. One thing that I have found definitely hands on, like for the last 24 years, Consultants from other companies don't assume they know how to host coach. We train very differently at Pamper Chef than any other company I know. And so we, we think, oh, they know what they're doing. Mm, not necessarily. Now, I do want to um, ask for a clarifying question, Josh. When you say they're cheating on another consultant, do they mean that, that they sell something else and they, and, and, or, or they know someone else who sells Pampered Chef? They, they love Pampered Chef, and they, they booked with me to help out a friend who had hosted a party. But they usually do Pampered Chef parties with fill-in-the-blank. Probably so, Karen Batty, I'm guessing. Probably Karen Batty. And it, <laughs> well, if they, if they said Karen Batty, I'd say, yeah, Karen loves me. She, she, she thinks it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but probably... Uh, probably not. Um, so here's, here's what I tell, like, so for people who maybe sign on my team and they say, yeah, but this one had a party with you or that or whatever. And I say, here's the thing. Um, in the Pampered Chef world, um, you're not cheating on someone when you attend a show and, and place an order. You're only cheating on them if you book with the other person. So you can go right. and invite everybody you want under the sun because we all know that when someone has a party, they want to invite everybody. And, you know, if someone hosted, you know, with me before and they get invited to another party and they go to that party and if it's Josh and he's on my team, yeah, book with them too. But if, if they, but even still, if they booked with someone else, Okay, that's what that's what happens. Um, but I would say that we all understand and really placing an order and attending a party of another consultant is not something that in our team, we consider cheating on someone. I don't know if that helps at all. Um, Certainly, I could try it next time that that comes up. But yeah, it was like two hosts in a row. And I was like, Ooh, come on. Yeah, comment about the, the attendance, if you don't mind. Um, so um, it was a, w a few comments ago, but someone had said something about um, attendance and you not knowing, you know, you're not talking to the people or you don't know who's there. I always, my host says, oh, well, you know, I've got 25 that are attending and then I'm doing my live and I see three people are watching me. So I not that I call them out on it, but I'm like, okay, so I see three of you, so the rest of you are going to be watching me on replay. <laughs> I just assume that they're going to do it, and I throw it out there and so that they don't feel like a jerk later when they're like, yeah, I didn't get to watch you live. I'm like, that's fine, you know, no big deal. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking to myself here with the hopes that there's 15 people watching, but the chances are that if there's three people watching, the rest of those, you know, the 12 people are going to look and watch me on replay. And that's just the way it's gonna be. It doesn't work out for everyone, uh, you know, even though it might be good for your host to watch you at five o'clock or seven o'clock or nine o'clock, it may not be okay with all her guests. So no, we got different time zones going yes, on. Yes, right. And so just where. throw it out there, you know? I, I put it right in my whole repertoire of what I'm saying. I'm, and, you know, and I'll be like, okay, so if you're not watching me live, just comment below that you've watched me on the replay. And, and, um, and then they know it's, it's perfectly fine to comment to me afterward that they didn't watch me live, you know? And um, so I can't even believe I'm going to say this, but I think I'm a convert. I love, love, love my <laughs> party, but man, do I love not carrying bags anywhere. And I love being able to have a glass of wine at home, which I would never drink at a show because I have to drive. And um, I would never in a million years do five in-home parties in a week. I would be wrecked by the end of the week. Um, but man, I could bang these things out. I could do two or more a day. I've done, I've done a couple of double headers in in-home party world where I might do one at 11 o'clock on a Saturday and one at seven. And by Sunday, I'm like, 
wait on me. I have worked so hard. I have like eight hours of work in one day. <laughs> Meanwhile, these things, I could do one at six. I could do one at seven. I could do one at eight and call it a day, call it a week. And, and seriously, and it brings me the same kind of joy that it brought, um, brought me as an in-home party consultant. So I just want to put that out to you because I know a lot of you have been in business a lot of years you signed up on this team, which does a lot of in-home parties, and you're just like, eh, post? Not the same. It can be. You can get that same amount of joy and a whole lot more money. Oh, my God. There's no anxiety that you forgot one of your tools at home or the seasoning. Oh, right, right. Anxiety there. I'm doing something. I'm like, oh, I didn't take the milk. I'll hold on one second. I got to go grab the milk. And it's just, it's so much easier on my nerves, you know, just to have everything right there. No, I, I, I didn't have the chicken. Yeah, and I, you know, 90% of you here know that I was the first one to stand up and say, I am not doing virtual. <laughs> but man, what a, what a change. Uh, a, now you, know, you can have 5,000 in sales in virtuals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, because yeah, oh. I haven't left the house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any other hesitations? Just one question, Karen. Um, when you do the Facebook Live, they can type things and you can see it like as you're doing it. Like, do you look and stop and say, oh, Mary had a question there. It's good, you know, or something. Yeah, like, so, so when, I go live, when I go live, I say, hi, it's Karen Batty, your Pampa Chef lady. When you get on here, I'm just going to give people a couple minutes. I want you to comment. I'm here. Hi, Karen, you're the best ever. We love you. Best come, you know, I just do something silly like that. So they come on, they start commenting. So now I know we've got some people there. By the way, lots of reminders, okay? Like an hour before, I take a picture of my demo. I go, hey, I'm ready, how about you? Um, things like that. I tell them to get their, their beverage of choice and, and a piece of paper so that they can keep, tri tri keep track of their, um, their wish list. Um, so then I, and then I tell them about the little thing they can hit the heart or the thumbs up when they like something. I tell them when I'm showing you something, if you want it and you love it, I want you to comment. I love it, have it. I said, just like we would an in-home party. So those who've never heard of the product might go, oh gosh, look, everybody has that. Or my friend, I love her and she has that and she's raving about it. So I get them to do that. Um, and then yes, I tell them to, to post their questions, but I also tell them I'm old and I got, I got you know, glasses and I might miss the questions. So if I miss them, um, I tell if you are a Pampered Chef groupie and you know the answer, answer them. And then in the end, I will stop what I'm doing and I will just answer questions. So I'll say, if you ask a question and you didn't get an answer for it, type it in again now. Um, and then after I hop off, I, I scroll through. Um, so I do like a half an hour of live and then a half an hour at my laptop where I'm scrolling through to make sure I've answered all the questions. Um, anybody who's posted something that's sort of a red flag, I'm connecting with them. And I also do a drawing the next morning and I tell them the way to get in the drawing is number one, place an order. Number two, post something that they loved, either that they saw that night or that they own. And number three, um, contact me to schedule a party of their own and they get three tickets into the on time or into the door prize. And that gets um, people to order that night. Yeah. I, I didn't even think that I had questions about that. Yeah, with a virtual model, so you just talked about how you do a drawing and you make it after the fact. That's great. What about bookings? What about bookings? Is yep, that so, all? Yep. So after I do whatever product demonstration I'm going to do, I do just what I did in an in in-home party. Hey guys, let me tell you about some special got going on. And I'm going to be posting all the details to this. To, so don't feel like you got to take notes. And I tell them about the, the guest special. I tell them about the host bonus. And I give my little blurb of why it's a great time to, to host. I couldn't type that all into a post. So when I go to post it, I just can type in a sentence with the, with the special. I have all of that ready to go because I posted it at my last party. And when I get off, I've got my last party and my current party. Boom, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, the rest of the right. stuff, I have some posts that are through post my party, but these I just kind of do. Okay. If are I were like real, a, yeah. Are you using like a virtual drawing slip, Karen? Um, I do, I, I'm not using it. I have something that they can fill out, but it's not a drawing slip. It's just a customer survey but hardly anybody fills it out even when i tell them they get extra points for it but um but i do what i did in in-home parties i don't care what they put on their survey slip i'm following up with everybody okay. and um for me i feel like the most important thing um and the difference for me is i feel like i'm connecting with people because this is my wheelhouse with the other virtual parties i know there are other consultants who are great at connecting with their guests through you know um games and having them comment and having them, um, you know, send them 
answers to things and then they start conversations. Um, that's never been my wheelhouse. This is my wheelhouse to connect with people. So I feel like the biggest difference for me doing the parties this way is not only does it bring me joy, but I connect with people. So then when I message them, I'm hearing back, even if we're not friends on Facebook. Um, and I'll post, I'll, I'll say in the comments, oh, Sue, just messaged you. So that then they can see the post and they can go look for my message. Um, and it just feels like it's, yeah. Um, so for those of you who are, are already doing virtual parties that's working for you, don't feel like you gotta change a thing. This is just for those of you who are just like, well, you know, in-home people, this just might be the thing that's gonna be just a natural progression for you and you're just gonna nail it right out of the, uh, right out of the gates because you got, this is your, already your wheelhouse. It, it might bring you joy, it might bring you even more success than you ever imagined. Here's the other thing, okay, some of you guys know, my dad died earlier this month and um and then my mother was has been in a um independent living facility and they had five positive covid cases and so we had to figure out a way to get her out of there and um and and keep her safe it's been the craziest month of my life i have paid little to no attention to my business and i'm going to sell twelve thousand dollars with four personal recruits I have no way to explain it except that I'm just in front of a lot of people and I, I thoroughly enjoy my live parties because you know what? I can get out of my own head for 30 minutes. I can't think of myself and this is the best 30 minutes of my day. And, um, and, uh, and even with not really being able to focus, um, it's there because we're just in front of so many more people so many more people even if they're not on their live like lynn like lynn was saying if they couldn't be at our in-home party they don't get to see us after the fact but when we go facebook live they can check in later and and they can hear our voice and they can feel like they were part of the crowd even when they weren't so all right um i'm gonna stop